Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to start the series about faith today. Um, <coughs> let's go to the Hebrews chapter 11 and see what the word of God says. And uh, Okay. Uh, is this, uh, can we go to NIV? Is this NIV? Hope so. Is, is this NIV? Okay, great. Okay, now faith is the, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance, assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at, at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what, of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when he spoke well of his offerings. <laughs> And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life to that, uh, to that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. How did he please God? Let's find out. By faith, no, no, let's continue. Verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And by faith, can you see, by faith, everything, by faith, by faith, by faith, okay, by faith, Noah, when he warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear he built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. And by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, and even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs, with him in the same promise. And for he was looking forward to the city which foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled, somebody say was enabled, was enabled to bear children because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. Let's just end there. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise and we give you glory. Amen. Touch your neighbor as you sit and say, please live by faith. Touch the other one and say, please. Live by faith. Yeah. In other words, to, to avoid unnecessary suffering, unnecessary tears, unnecessary diseases, please live by faith. Amen. Now, I want to open by telling you that faith has dimensions. Faith is the same faith, but it has dimensions. Right? When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you get, the Bible says that we have been saved by faith. We have been, we have been saved by grace through faith. 
In other words, faith played a role in us being saved, okay? And also, uh, 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 we become children of God because of faith. Israel had to believe God, not like other nations who carried their God. They had to believe Him even when they have not seen Him, right? So, this is the, the first foundation where you are introduced to God then you, you have a relationship with God, all right? Then you know that now I'm a child of God, my sins are forgiven, you know, and I am I'm born again, I'm a child of God, I've got God on my side and all of that. So you know that, right? So your destiny is secured, you already know that. It's in you. You testify about what the Lord has done for you, how he changed your life, how he forgave you, and so you had an encounter with God. So that, that, that first level of faith is an encounter with God. It's like the first level of faith with Abraham when God called him out of the city, of the place. He called him out. That, that call was an introduction to the relationship. So the first faith we have is the faith that, that helps us to have a relationship with God. It is the same faith you use when you pray. Every time you pray, you're using the faith that introduced you to salvation. It was for relationship. So that faith is for relationship with God. It's for interacting with God. It's for receiving things that are from God and God receiving things that are from you. Okay? So that is the kind of faith. We, we are, I think that what we have done is that in the church for a long time, we have dwelt in this kind of faith. If you come to believers, that's all they speak about. They speak about much more this kind of faith, okay? Which is, it's important, but it's not enough for earth. It's not enough for earth. Salvation is not enough for earth. Redemption is not enough for earth. Having your sins forgiven, it's not enough for us because you can be saved and go like Lazarus when Jesus told the story. He told the story about a man that had a relationship with God. Then the Bible says that this man, uh, there was a, a rich man. You remember the story? Jesus Christ says, rich man and a poor man. Yeah. Lazarus, all right? And it's amazing that the, the rich man is not given the name. Well, you know, but, but, but the poor man is given the name. But the, the name Lazarus means he that God has helped. But now he's helpless. Jesus was trying to communicate something here. All right? So the rich man died, went to hell. And then Lazarus, the poor guy who was outside and had, you know, terrible... Uh, in terrible condition he went he went to the place where he was comforted to the bosom of Abraham right but now Jesus is telling us that we can choose in this life to go as poor as poor as possible and still make it to heaven because he had faith he had relationship with God relationship with God listen to me relationship with God through faith will not help you with daily necessities <laughs> Lazarus died begging he had relationship with God Look at his destiny. He is in the place where he is now comforted. But on earth, he lived in hell. But it was not God's will. It's either it was his choice or his misunderstanding of God's intentions and God's promises and God's heart. I want you to understand that it is possible for you to suffer until you die. Uh, let me say it again. You're not, not going to like that. It's possible for you to suffer and it's not within God's just 
wishes, it's within your choosing. In this earth, nobody owes you anything. The government does not own you anything. Nobody. If you belong to God, then God has to be fully in charge over you. It does not matter where you live. It does not matter what the economy is doing. It does not matter what is the situation of your country. But if you believe in God, like Isaac, the Bible says he prospered in famine. He wanted to go to Egypt. And God said, do not go to Egypt. God says, I will bless you here in the famine. And the Bible says he began to take action and he began to do something in Faman. And the Bible says God blessed him. Genesis 26 from verse 1. So in the Bible we see people who have been faced with terrible conditions. Isaac is in Faman. And everybody wants to move to Egypt. Because the Egypt was the power, was, the, was the, 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 the basket of the world at that time. But God refused. He said, do not go down to Egypt. Do not go down to Egypt. You know, do not what? Do not go down to Egypt. Because your, your father went down to Egypt and it was not nice. You know, some things, uh, terrible things happened. So he said, do not go. He said, he said, stay here. And then God says, I will bless you here. The Bible says the man became so rich until they chased him out of the country. They say, you are too much for us. Now, I'm trying to explain the kind of God you received. And the Bible says that he is not, he does not choose faces. He does not choose certain people over other people. Relationship. I know that you are a prayer warrior. But the most poor people are intercessors. If prayer would make people rich, you would be rich by now. The most poorest people are intercessors. Not because it's wrong to pray. But the problem of thinking that you can do everything by prayer, that's where you get deceived. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All you need to pray. No, it's not true. In fact, all these people that the Bible speaks about here, prayer was never mentioned. <laughs> not because it's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. Okay, I believe, I believe in prayer. I pray. I believe in prayer. Don't, we're a praying church, right? We are a praying church. Don't misunderstand me. Okay? But prayer is not mentioned. Prayer is not in the equation of, of prosperity. Write it down. I want you to write it. Prayer is not in the equation of prosperity. You can't prosper through prayer. Right. But prayer can create an atmosphere. Then if you don't take action, you'll still suffer. In the, in the atmosphere that is pregnant with possibilities for things to happen. I'm not sure if it makes sense to you now. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, uh, discard prayer. Alright? I'm saying it can create an environment. But there are so many people who are praying, praying and praying, and then the environment is created and they do nothing. And they still remain in the same position. Faith that brings salvation, relationship, we need it to survive in this earth. Alright? But we don't need it to prosper. Hmm. We need it to relate. There's a second level of prayer where the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Now this is faith 
to live not to be saved now this is where many believers have shortcoming the just not shall pray the just shall live by prayer no no by, by faith in other words they shall do things on earth this is not for heaven this is in earth in the earth right so that the, the just shall live the just shall take action the just shall do movements the just shall take decisions the just shall plan the just shall organize the just shall go and knock somewhere the just shall communicate the just shall make a business deal the just the just shall live by faith can I tell you something living by faith does not mean waiting on God there's a difference between waiting on God and doing things by faith. By faith, Noah built an ark. Action. Action. He built an ark by faith. And when you check the people that the Bible has mentioned, there is action all the time. By faith, they did this. By faith, Abel gave action. If you check most of the people that are mentioned that there is work attached to their faith. Somebody say work. Yeah, there's work. There's activities attached to their faith. That's how, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how. That the faith, faith, faith is for results. Faith is for achievement. Faith is for achievements. Faith, faith, faith is for progress. Faith is for moving forward. Faith, faith is faith. Faith, faith. If you have faith, if you have faith, you've got something to show. And every time you say you have faith, it means you are dealing with something. Because faith, please get this please. Faith deals with things. Yes, no. Somebody say things. Yeah. Faith is for things. Let's, let's go to verse 1 please. Faith is for things. Faith is for things. By faith. Now faith is the substance of things. It's the substance. Can you see that? It's the substance of things. What things are you looking for? What things do you need in your life? Because faith is not just for God. So in other words, if you have faith, show me things. You say you have faith? Show me things. Let me see some things. Let me see some happenings around your life. Let me see some movement about around your life. Because faith will introduce you to things. And if you say you have faith, show me some things. And everybody in this house has ability. Everybody who's in this house has ability for things. Everybody. That's why the Bible says when you come to the Lord, it says there's nothing impossible. What is impossible? Things. Nothing. Thing. Thing. Nothing is impossible for him that believes. Because people who are believers must deal with things. And when people are believers, Things must change. Your family environment must change. Your children atmosphere must change. Everything must change because you have faith. Faith affects things. I'll teach you some things that I, I wish I would have known earlier in life. I wouldn't have made mistakes like this. 
there are things that I would be far in my life. I want to tell you some other things I'm going to share. If you are in your 30s, you are in your 20s, you still have a good chance to, to, to achieve things more than you would ever do. I'll give you some things because we have made mistakes. We have made faith a religious thing. But faith is not a religious thing. It's not a religious thing. We have made faith a church thing. Faith is not a church thing. Faith is for life. Faith is for challenging strongholds. Faith is to move into territory. Faith is to achieve things that your forefathers did not achieve. Faith is for breaking ground and experience things that your mother has reaching the, the, the higher heights that your father has never reached. Faith is radical. I'm not sure you get what I'm trying to say to you. I'm telling that that faith is radical. Go to that university radical. Study that PhD radical. Start that company radical. Be radical about it. Because faith in its nature, it's radical. So faith is, it says, you know now, look at this. The Bible says that it's the substance Oh God. It's the substance. It's the substance. It says that faith is tangible. It's something you can feel. If you have it, you would know it. If you don't have it, you will know it. If you move in a certain direction and you don't have faith, you'll feel it that you don't have. Faith is tangible. Faith is substance. When it occupies your heart, its presence cannot be denied. Are you hearing that? The presence of faith cannot be denied. Now look at this. It says that it is the evidence. Evidence of what again? Evidence of what? Of things. I don't understand people say that you can't change your material things. Are, are, are those not things? So I'm, I'm not sure. Are I not, I not those things? Isn't a car a thing? It is a, it, 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 isn't a boat that, that Noah built a thing? The offering that Abel gave to God, isn't that a thing? God is a God of things. And he wants to give, us, to give us things. And he does not want us to be empty of things. Because living a life that is empty of things is very frustrated. It was, it's very frustrating. I'm telling you. Just, just don't have clothes for winter. You'll see how frustrating. It is. Those are things. Those are things. Yeah, just have your car acting winter time. That's a thing. Why do people get to depression? Things. Things. It's things that make people to get into depression. So when you have faith, you have everything sorted. Things will not control you when you have faith. Now let's take it, let's take it a little bit further. Let's take it a little bit further. I think you have, yeah, it's the confidence of what we hope for. Now, I want you to understand that, you know what is hope? Faith is for people who are hoping for something. Now, if you are not hoping for something, you don't need faith. If you don't hope for your life to be better, if you don't know hope, if you don't have plans, if you don't have goals, if you don't have things to achieve, you just don't need faith. That faith we talk, that, that the Bible talks about in the book of, of Hebrews here, it's not the saving faith. It's not the faith to relate to God much. But it's the faith that causes change. So can you see that? You see? 
Oh God. Somebody say I have faith. You know what? What what John what 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 uh, 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 James says? He says you have faith. He says then if you say you have faith, show me your works. Show me something. Hmm. Did you hear what I said to you? If you have faith, you must do what? Yeah. If you have nothing to show, your faith cannot be seen. If you have faith, un unless you talk about the faith relationship with God, you know the faith relationship with God? Nobody sees it. You know you have it. God knows you have it. You relate with God. Nobody really has, you know, the, the, you know, you know. Sometimes it's people who can descend to see that kind of faith. That, oh, you love God. Oh, then we, we can discern. But it's, it's, it does not have physical manifestation. But the faith to live has physical manifestation. Has things that we can touch and things that we can see. You know, it says that by faith we understand that the universe by faith Abraham left his country he did not know where he was going now this is a wonderful thing about faith he left but he did not know what he was going when you have faith you don't always know what you are doing When we sat at the church and we said what I was doing, I would not, I, no, I did not know exactly. When we started at CKLI, some, they started, we've been with us, they started asking me a lot of questions. Some of the questions I did not know. But I had him. I had him. Abraham had, get out of your country, leave everything, blah, 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 blah. But when you ask him where he's going, he will say, I don't know. When you have faith, be confident in not knowing physically. Sometimes when you operate on faith, you feel, you, you, you feel like a fool. Because faith has its own language. So, you, 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 can, you can, faith, listen, faith does not speak sense. That's what I'm trying to say to you. It does not speak sense. God can come to you and say, start, 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 start the Fed Cook company, a multi-million, this Fed Cook. You say, Fed Cook? He said, yes, Fed Cook. And here with your dishes, you are, you are doing, and people say that you are crazy. Yeah, you say it's an international company, but God knows what he's going to do. God knows what he's going to, you know, understand that. Because faith, look at this, faith, faith works by obedience as well. One of the things when we reach heaven that will be surprised is that God has told us many things about the problems and how to escape our problems and how to achieve and how to be great things in this life and we doubt it. That's an issue. The opposite of faith is doubt. Faith can cancel what God is telling you. It can cancel of God. God can tell you now to do something now and you'll be busy asking if it's God or it's your mind and what while you are still asking whatever depending who's going to win is it doubt or the faith that you feel is going to win over your life like that because God communicates through faith God the reason why uh, Abraham went to the place where he did not know he only knew it when he was approaching or oh, let's check a verse let's check a verse God says to Abraham take your son your only son and uh, go offer him as a living, uh, living sacrifice, okay? Um, a, a burning sacrifice or something like that. Then the Bible says he left. He, took, he took the donkeys and his servants and everything and he went to the place. And God says, go to the place I will show you. He did not tell him the name of the place. He said, I will show you. In other words, he walks in uncertainty. Okay, if God says, God says, I will show you. And he says, go. He does not tell you which direction. 
So you have to sense which direction that, okay, then it, then it to sense, okay, I feel like maybe this side, you know. Then as it goes, he does not know when, he, he does not know if he has arrived. Because God says, I'll show you. And when they're coming next to the place, Mount Moria, and the Bible says, then Abraham saw the place. How did he see the place? By faith. In other words, in him, something said, this is it. How do you know it, Abraham? This is it. God will, know, well, God will speak to you. This is the career. This is the business. This is the investment. This is the company. Are you what I'm trying to say to you? As a child of God, you must wait on faith that God must be able to communicate to it. Because if this is it, you will know it. Don't ask me, how did I know it? I know it. There are things that I know. Yeah, how do you know it? I know. I just know. I know some people say, don't say never, never. But there are things within my faith that I say never, not in my time. It will not happen to me. How do I know it? I know. There is an inner knowing. I know it within myself. You know, I know that I'm not created for poverty. How do I know it? I know it. There's something in me that says, this is it. Faith is like a blanket. When it comes on you, baby, you'll feel it. I'm telling you, you'll feel it. Yeah, I've been poor. I've been without food. I've slept hungry. But there's nothing in me. There's nothing in me that accepted it. There's nothing in me. I've been in the hospital. I've been in ICU. But there's nothing in me that accepts the disease. There's, there's something in me that keep on repelling all these things. Even when these things are happening. But in me, it just, it just does not sit well. It does, it, it does not. Something says to me, I'm never created for this. I'm not going to die by this. I'm not going to be like this for the rest of my life. This is not my destiny because your faith speaks your destiny. Can I say this again? Your faith speaks your destiny. Your faith speaks your destiny. There are things that you cannot accept because your faith will keep on repairing, repelling those things. How do you trust God for a child for over 20 years like Abraham? He wanted to give up and Sarah wanted to give up but something inside was too strong. Something kept on kicking. Something said you'd rather die believing God than doubting God. Something, faith, 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 faith. Sometimes faith becomes like a crazy voice in you. It speaks to you. It speaks to you. It speaks to you. It speaks to you. You just know in the deepest part of your heart that you are a success in spite of the challenges, in spite of the conditions, in spite of your experiences, in spite of what you're going through, but you know that I am a success no matter what. That's why it's wonderful to come to a church like this. It may not be big, but it's life. It gives you life. It changes your perspective. It imparts in you a different mindset altogether. Are you hearing that I'm trying to say to you? I'm trying to say that I'm speaking to your faith. And your faith can understand what I'm saying. Because your faith is telling you that you are greater than this. You are powerful than this. You can go further than this. Your faith is telling you that the condition where you are is not permanent. Are you from trying to say to you? You may be lacking right now, but your faith tells you that it is not permanent. Though I walk through the valley, valley of the shadow of death, you are just walking through. You are walking through poverty. You're not going to die in poverty. You are walking through pain. You're not going to die in pain. You are walking through trouble, but you're not going to die in trouble. You are walking through experiences of curses, but the curses are going to be broken. Something says it will not always be like this. It will not always be like this. I will not always live like this. I will not always cry like this. I will not always doubt God like this. 
because when you are through problems sometimes you ask if God still loves you if God still has a plan if God is faithful to his word what God told you he's gonna do it uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If he's if he's promised you a child, Sarah, at ninety years you're gonna have a child, and he's gonna give you more thirty-seven years to stay with your baby. When God blesses you, He will allow you to enjoy the blessing. He will add years to you to enjoy the blessing in Jesus' mighty name. It's not late. It is not late. Are you hearing me? It is not late. That's why God begins by telling you where you need to go. He begins by telling them you are going to Canaan. And then they go through the wilderness. But it is the word that is said in Egypt that they are going to Canaan. God begins to tell you his word. He begins to tell I'm going to use you. He begins to tell I'm going to uplift you. He begins to tell I'm going to make you a business person. He begins to, to tell you the word. And then you go through the wilderness. Do not allow the wilderness to change what God said. Are you hearing me what I'm trying to say? Let me, I'm going to close faster. Do not allow the wilderness to tell you to change what God said. If God says we are going to Canaan, do not allow the wilderness. Do not allow the wilderness to change you. Because after God has released the word and we have grabbed the word by faith, there's going to be wildernesses. There's going to be troubles. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be poverty. There's going to be lack of finance. There's going to be pain. There's going to be disappointment. But don't ever think that God will change just because your situation is changing. You know, sit down. There are things in my life where I thought, God, I think I'm late. I said, God, I'm late. By this time, I should be far. By this time, I should be there. I think I'm late. But God said, don't ever change my word because of what you're going through. Don't ever speak your situation because I am the Lord. He said to Abraham when he was old, he said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? God can make you a millionaire when you are 70 years old. He can make you a millionaire when you are 80. He can make you. God can perform his word. God, the word of God is true. There is a faith to live. Hold on to the faith. Hold on to what he said. Hold on to the word of God. Because you're going to go through. And you are going to conquer. Because there's nothing impossible to him that believes. Shout, I believe. Sit down. this faith makes every circumstance temporary let me say this maybe I will close with this let me tell you are you hearing me faith makes what if you have faith everything you go through is temporary everything if you are sick is for a time if you're financially challenged, it's for a season. But other seasons are longer than others. Other seasons take years. Other seasons take months. But eventually, faith will cause that season to pass. There is no permanent challenge with faith. There's no permanent challenge. 
I wish I could repeat this, that you get it into your spirit. There is no permanent challenge with faith. With faith, everything is temporary. Hopelessness and doubts make things permanent. But when faith kicks in, you know, I like all of the time, I like to call this scripture. David says that though I walk through, it does not say I'm going to die. Even when situation said you're going to die. But he refused to speak the situation. He says, though I walk through the shadow of the veil of death, the veil of the shadow of death, he says, I will fear no evil. And he says, because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Faith comforts you when it's not yet time for the breakthrough. I wish I could talk to you. Are you hearing me? Faith comforts you. It keeps you. It comforts you. Okay? You are going through the, through the valley of the shadow of death. You're going through Nothing has changed yet. Situation seems the same. But faith keeps on comforting you so that you don't lose your mind. It comforts you. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But the issue is this. We are miles, taking miles and miles and miles towards destiny. Miles and then boom, goodness and mercy. You see that? Then boom, then goodness and mercy. And the wonderful thing is this He says that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In other words, after the valley of the shadow of death, there is a permanent blessing. A permanent. A permanent, not just small, small provisions. Small, small provisions while you are still going through. But there is a permanent place where goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. But you need to be pressing through faith. <clears throat> Let me say this to you. Israel, they, had, they operate on two elements, Israel. Okay, they operated on obedience, on faith, number one, because they wouldn't have known that there's Jehovah in heaven without faith, right? Okay, they operated on faith. They believed in God. That was faith, okay? But also, they operated on obedience. And then God said to them, if you are obedience, which means that if you comply with what I say, then God said that I'll make you the head only. I'll make you a head only and not a tail. God says, I will lift you above other nations. You see? Faith creates competition with the world. Faith spoils the world. So God, so now there was, there was a time where the God, the God of Israel did things and all, all nations were, were trembling before Israel. They were, they were fearful of Israel. Even Rahab came and said, I've heard of the great things that your God has done. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard. They achieved many things so much that the temple was a, dest a tourist destiny. That people will come from their countries and, 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 and not presidents and kings at that time will come from their countries and they'll come just to see the temple. That's how God has elevated them. So with the blood of Jesus, which is better? 
which speaks better things than the blood of Abel? Couldn't we do more things? Couldn't we achieve more things? The reason why some people came who were not Jews, they converted and came to the Jewish religion, it was because of the things they saw with Israel. If we don't show the glory of our God, people will go to Islam. We'll go to Hare Krishna. We'll go to New Age. Because God put it clear to, to someone, to Samuel the prophet. He said, he said, people look at the outside appearance. There are people who will follow you to church when they see a material change in your life. We were taking Texas with her. Now she's got a car. Now she has moved up to a township. Now she's living. Okay. Uh, it means this thing works. I'm not sure you get what I'm trying to say to you. It's difficult to reveal God if you have no things to show. Things should not control us. But things are tools to show the glory of our God. Desire things. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say to you. When you pray to God, what do you pray about? Things. You pray about your children. It falls to things. You pray about provision. It falls to things. Everything, things. So now be comfortable with things and say, God, open my spirit. I am ready. Tell me what should I do. Tell me what kind of business I should start. What should what company should I register? Who should I go to? Which door should I knock? No, I've not fallen. Uh, this is faith I'm teaching you now. Are, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Israel, every time they are economic, oh God, don't, don't, don't you know that in the world we respect nations based on economy? Don't you know that? Yeah. The reason why Africa is looked down upon is the economy issue. Finish. People don't care what kind of language. Why people are moving to China? They don't care. They don't even hear the language. They don't hear nothing. Even when they don't like Chinese, but they respect Chinese. People don't need to like us, but they can respect us when we have things. First time I went to America, I said, okay, that's why this country is respected. I see their infrastructure, I see their things, I see that, I said, okay, I see the kind of level of life they live and the, the average salary, salary there and everything. I said, this is the reason why they're respected. There is, listen, without things, there's no respect. Now let me say it again. Can I say it again? Without things. The reason why they don't respect you in your family, it's things. When you have things, they will not take decisions. They will wait for you. Your uncles will call you uncle when you have things. Listen to me, please. If you are so spiritual and you have now come to the level when you say things don't matter, I'm here to revive you in the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you, you are missing God's will for your life. God wants you to have things and all things are possible. All things are possible. Can I tell Can I say it again? All things are possible. Whatever you think about, all things 
things are possible. The reason why God has brought you here is because he is reviving in you the faith for things. The things that will glorify God. The things that will glorify God. Are you hearing me? Things that will glorify God. We are not materialistic, but we are glorious. We believe that when God blesses us, when people see the blessings, then people will praise our God. Sit down. But look at this, please. Have you ever noticed that when you are poor, nobody, nobody studies the source of your poverty? There's no argument. Why are you poor? How come you're poor? Nobody, nobody, nobody's interested. But when you are rich, they want to know the source of your rich, source of your income. You become interesting. I decree in the name of Jesus that God will make you interesting. That the, 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 the spirit of wealth is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy over your life that the spirit that draws things, the blessing of God, that it comes upon your life, the spirit of prosperity, I decree in Jesus' mighty name that God prospers you and lifts you up until the name of the Lord is respected because of you in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout, Jesus! His faith. Let, let me tell you in, the, in, a, in a simple, simple way. Faith is simply mindset. Divine mindset. If it comes from God, divine mindset. Mindset that says, "I will make it." That says, "I don't care how much I've suffered. I'm gonna make it." This, as long as I'm alive, something is a, is, a, is gonna happen in my life. Faith is stubborn. Faith does not submit to circumstances. Are you hearing me? God has brought you here to change you. He has brought you here to change your mindset. God, 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 are you hearing me? God has brought you here to lift you. God, God, God has brought you here to, uh, to unlock your potential. You've got too much potential locked in you. It has been compromised by your surroundings. It has been compromised by the place where you were born. I don't, let's, can I tell you something? The place where you grew up in must not control your life. I was born in the rural area, looking after cows, looking after cattle. I did not want that to control me. Because when I came to the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You can't tell me I'm born in the rural area, so I can't have this, I can't go there, I can't travel there. The devil is a liar. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I decree that you are freed from your background. Your background, your back, are you hearing me? You are free from your background. You're free from your environment in the name of It does not matter where you stay. You can still make it. Uh, is, there, is there anything good that can come from Nazareth? I'm telling you that anything good can come from Nazareth. Jesus was born in Nazareth. Jesus was born in nothing. Jesus was born in something that was, disgust, that was disgusted, that was disrespected. And people ask, is anything good that can come from Nazareth? I'm telling you, people are looking at your family. They're saying, is there anything good that can come out of your family? That you have an answer today. You must say, it's me. Is there any progressive that can come from your family you must say it's me is there any millions that can come from your family you say it's me because God is changing your mindset and your faith is multiplying and your faith is increasing in Jesus mighty name are closed they said we're going to continue next week there's nothing impossible don't let the standard of your family be your
of standard. Where you are born, it's not where you are going. Jesus was born in a manger, but when he went, he went in glory in a cloud. He went in a cloud, glory. When he was born, nobody saw him. But when he was lifted, crowds of disciples were looking up. There's nothing wrong with wanting things, going for things. What is wrong is the reason why. Is the reason why you do that. If you do it for fleshly reason, that makes it wrong. If you do it for competition, that makes it wrong. If you do it because you are power hungry, or you want fame, you want what, then that is wrong. But if you want to be loaded for Christ, for the gospel, you want to be loaded for the gospel, you say, God, make me a kingdom financier. You say, God, make me, make me, make me. If you have a desire that, God, I want to bring million and one million dollar in your house one day, then you are the right person that God is... Do you know that God is wealthy? God is looking for the people to trust with money. He's looking for the people. Many people disappointed him. Many people, when they became millionaires, they, they felt they are bigger than pastors, bigger than the church. From today, let your mind be expanded. Think beyond your job. Are you hearing me? Start investing. Get into crypto. Are you hearing this? Start. Start developing some skills. Start trading as a hobby. Prepare yourself. Align yourself. The reason why God brings this message is because he wants to lift us. He wants to lift us. Someone clap hands for Jesus. What a powerful word that was. I trust you were blessed as I was. To all our members who would like to send their tithes and operate, feel free to do so on the details stated on the screen. Also, to our fellow saints that would like to contribute to the work of the kingdom, you can do so on the details stated on the screen. Reach out to us for all your spiritual needs. The contact details are stated on the screen. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Stay blessed.